You are listening now to A Word of Faith with Bishop Macedo. Thanks be to God. May God bless all of you, and He may have mercy on all of us, and He may touch the life of those that are sincere, those that are hungry, those who are thirsty, those who are searching of truth. May the Holy Spirit may reach them today, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. That's it. You who are listening to me right now, maybe your suffering is so bitter, so cruel, so bad that you may say, or you, you don't tell this to nobody, but you tell this to yourself saying, you know, my life has no more hope. There's no solution for me. God has forgotten me. God, I believe God does not exist. It's not fair. It's not right. How can it be? If he exists, he must see me, seeing this situation, seeing that I'm in suffering, and that I'm going through this bad moment. But you do not realize what is actually written. And what is written, which was spoken by God himself, in regards to answering those that are saying that there is no hope, he says this. Pay attention to this word. Look at what is written. Can a woman forget her nursing child? Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Can a woman forget? Can a woman, a mother, forget his nursing child? And, and even if she forgot, surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. God does not forget anyone. God does not forget anything. God does not forget anything. He, don't, he didn't forget you. That's why you are listening to this program right now. You are listening to us in this moment, knowing right now, that God has not forgotten you. Whatever it is your situation, critical, whatever is the situation physically, whether you are sick with a disease, infirmity, financial problems, family problems, sentimental problems, or worse, situation that you may have. If you are Catholic or Spiritist or Evangelical, if you practice witchcraft, or you are Buddhist, if you are Muslim, or a Jew, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter your religion, because it doesn't matter to God. Your condition, your spiritual condition, if you are a sinner or if you are not a sinner, it doesn't matter. If you are that person who is faithful in your religion or not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you are a thief. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have killed anyone, if you murdered, if you, if you were cruel, evil against someone. That for God doesn't matter. What you have to know is that God has not forgotten you. It's a fact. The second thing, the second thing that you need to know, God, He gives you and has, has given you faith. 
have, has lent you faith so that you can use it in benefits for yourself. He gave you faith just as he gave you the feet for you to walk. He gives us faith as he gives us the eyes to see. He gives us faith like he gives us our hands to touch, to, to grab, to hold. He gives us faith as he gives a life, the air that we breathe. Even those who are evil, God blesses them. Even those who are evil, God is good to them. He is good to them because they breathe the clear air that comes from God. They enjoy the sunlight, the sun that, that shines. And no man has created the sun. It was no man who created the oxygen that we breathe. It was no man who created the nature. God gave us everything. But above all, He gave us faith. He gave us faith. He gave, gave faith to you. He gave you faith. And then you say, but Bishop, I have faith. I believe in God. But I prayed so much. I fasted so much. I did this. I did vows. And on. I've done so many things. And my life doesn't change. You know why it did not change yet? Because you didn't do the third thing. And what is the third step? The first step is that God does not forget you. The second step is that God gave you faith. The third step is that you did not show this faith. You did not manifest this faith. You perhaps have prayed, you per perhaps have been a religious person, but did not act on your faith. You did not take action of faith. And you know what is the, the easiest or the strongest action of faith that there is? Is repentance. When a person truly repents, when a person bows before God, whether they, they surrender or they go down their knees or not, but if inside of them they say, Oh my God, I do not know how I am here. I don't even know what I came to do in this world. But if you exist, if you exist, if you exist, you can see me. If you exist and you see me and you hear me, have compassion because I can't take it anymore, this situation. And I know and I recognize that only you are God. I recognize that only you are God because I've, I've gone through so many churches, religions. I called upon so many gods. I called on the God of gold, silver, bronze, of stones. I called upon the God of, of all kinds of materials, but never, never called upon the God that is spirit and true. Never. But now, in a sincere way, I surrender to you. I surrender the old life I have lived. And I ask, have compassion to me right now and take me out of this valley. Take me out of this pit. I have nowhere else to go. My dear listener, God is so great and glorious that He has reserved for His own people faith. God has promised faith and the inheritance of His children to you. Look at what the scripture says. Has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which He promised to those who love Him? Meaning, God has given to you faith so that you can be rich in faith. 
Rich in faith is rich in all the way. For you to be rich in faith is to be rich with the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of faith. And when you receive the spirit of faith, which is the Holy Spirit, there is nothing else or impossible for you. Nothing, absolutely nothing impossible for you. Even the mountains will obey your word. But it's needed that you act in this faith. For the mountain to obey your voice, you need to speak, not to for the fig to be dried. In order for the fig to be dried, you have to speak to the fig, and the fig got dried. He used his faith, the power of faith. God has given to you the power to change the situation that you are there. So don't be crying over your situation, counting your problems or telling your problems to other people to have people having pity on you, because that's not going to make no difference. It's not worth doing that. The more you tell people about your problems, the more you tell people about your situation, the more you tell people about your problems, you tell your problems to other people, more, the deeper you're going to get into your problems, because you're not telling your problem to God. And you're not depending on Him, you're depending on others. And to act and count on God is to speak to Him and say, to, I'm not going to tell them to the fig, I'm not going to tell the mountain to move. I want this evil that is in my life, this evil that is upon my life, burdening me, I want it removed. I want a new life. I want a new life. I want to have the right to live a new life because I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. So, this is the prayer that you must make. I gave you the tip on how you can talk to God. I gave you the map. I gave you the recipe for you to do it. But you have to do now your part. Each one has to speak up with the faith that you have. And there is more. God allows the situation to come at you so that you can come to this moment of humiliation, of humbleness, and call upon Him with faith, with certainty, with conviction, with assurance. That's right. That's faith. Faith is like this. It manifests in a, in a powerful way. It manifests in a brutal way, but it brings great results. You shall hear now a testimony of this person that had an experience with God. Let us hear it. My life before I joined the Universal Church was very empty. When my parents got divorced as I was a young child, uh, that really affected me. I didn't know how to cope with that or uh, to vent to anybody. Um, hold on. <laughs> um, my mom would uh, get in a lot of fights with my dad when I was a little girl. And um, I witnessed a lot of what would happen in the house. My mom would hit my dad. And my dad would sit in a chair and deny that he didn't do anything wrong when we knew what he was doing was wrong. And he would cheat and spend the money that he shouldn't have been spending for the family. And um, I was really little. I don't remember how old. But that's what I remember. Um, my dad coming home late and uh, my mom pulling him aside and talking to him in the room and closing the door but I would listen to everything through the wall. And I'd hear my mom crying and uh, upset. My mom asked for a divorce, but my dad left the house and uh, the house went under foreclosure and we had to move. My mom had to 
carry everything and she was so concerned about what was going on with her and my father that she didn't really give me the love that I needed to let me know that it was going to be okay. I just grew up with that resentment towards both of my parents and the confusion and I didn't really know how to handle that. I had a best friend who I'd always hang out with. I would leave my house to go be with her to escape my problems at home. And that's when it all began. And I started using drugs with her and we became really close. And I hated being home because I knew at home I had to deal with what was actually going on. I would come home high and very aggressive and violent. And everything my mom said would upset me and irritate me. And there was no love or communication. So my mom and I would start to argue and then progressively we'd start to fight. My mom had anger issues too, so my mom would react in hitting me. So we had a lot of problems at home. The problems inside of me were building up. Well, I had a child at 17, living at home with my mom and things still aren't okay. I still haven't been able to express all this time what's been going on with me and um, she kicked me and my daughter out. Uh, Grandma was the only person that was uh, willing to take me and my daughter in and help me. So she suggested that I come stay with her. When I came down to Grandma, she took care of me like if I was her own daughter. And um, that's when she told me that I needed to go to church and that my life needed to change. I went on a Friday, so that's a great day to go. <laughs> I was getting attacked and I didn't know it. Spiritually, my grandma's telling me it's going to be okay to just relax and try to listen to the message. I continued to go to the Universal Church in Corona when the pastor took me aside and talked to me. You know I had issues, but he took the time to uh, ask me what's going on and to pray for me. I felt like I just gave everything to God and that's when I slowly started to change. And I was able to leave everything there at the altar, at the cross. As I was speaking and telling him all my issues, I felt uh, sad, really hurt inside because I wasn't able to open up to anybody. But with him, I felt comfortable and I trusted him. But towards the end, after prayer, I felt different, happy, like I let everything go and that I had peace again and that God was going to help me and change things for my life. I started to change the way I lived my life and who I was and the things I chose. And I have uh, some downtime being sober and clean, so I'm really proud of myself. I spend a lot of quality time with my kids. We work out all together, so we go to the park, or we'll go to the movies, or we'll have lunch. My mom's my best friend now, and uh, we get along great. We go to church together every day. <laughs> Faith and intelligence go together. Although faith sounds crazy to this world, it's intelligent because it makes us know that we can be happy. Faith also keeps us from accepting a life of defeat and allows us to fight to conquer a life of victory and success. If nothing is going according to plan, it's time for you to use your intelligence and faith to bring to existence the desires of your heart. The Universal Church, a place of faith to change your life. I had a lot of hate inside of me towards my, my mom. So I felt rejected. I felt like she didn't love me. I just always felt like if I was alone, I had a little brother at that time, which I always felt like if I was his mom, I was always taking care of him. Just a lot of situations in the house that I don't feel that I shouldn't have had to been placed in. I was very rebellious. I started drinking at a very young age. Just trying to, to fill that emptiness. When I left my house at 16, I had met uh, my kid's father. We ended up living together. He was a gang member and it was a different kind of suffering. He was unfaithful to me. He was involved in selling drugs. He was murdered and he died in my arms. That was beginning of another suffering. Because of all of that, we ended up uh, being homeless. So me and the kids ended up living in the car. I didn't want to live. I was thinking about committing suicide because 
I didn't know how to be a mother and a father. You know, my son caught me in the bathroom with the pills in my hand. That was, I think, the hardest, you know. And that is where I said, this is, this is it. I felt the difference when I left that first Friday. I started seeing things falling into place. You know, of course, things come and go, problems, but it's, you handle them in a different way. Where there was hopelessness before, there was hope. They teach you how to use your faith. They teach you how to, to put it into practice, how to see results, you know, and get those fruits, see those fruits from your faith an intelligent faith. All the curses are turned into blessings. Universal Online Radio. Wherever you are, we are there for you. I was adopted and I didn't understand my adoptive parents. I didn't understand where they were coming from. You know, I wanted to know who my real mom 
is and what she did and who she was. And my parents always told me that she wasn't a good person. You don't need to be around her. So I started to rebel. I was um, hanging out in the streets, hanging out with wrong friends, you know, smoking. I found my real mom and I ended up living with her. And to find out it wasn't the way I needed to be. And it was other, there was other times where she did pull me into certain other lifestyle with drug dealers and stuff like that. Three years ago, she had introduced me to this guy and said, you know, if you need your phone bill paid, if you need, you want a real man, this is a man that could take care of you. He was no good. She only did that for him to be around so she can get her crack. And one time, one of her friends ratted her out. And one night, I just came home from work and I come in the house and I just changed my clothes and there's a whole bunch of police in the house. So everybody had to go to jail. I just started to break down and cry. I was like, why, why did I do this to myself? Why, why did I get myself in this place? Why did I have to go so hard to go nowhere, you know? I couldn't change the situation because that person didn't want it to change. It was, it was devastating. So I read the paper and it was like, do you feel like you have bad luck, depression, bad spirits? And I was like, wow. Okay, maybe I'll go on a Friday to the church. I don't like how my life is going. I feel very depressed. So I'll give it a try. I, I definitely saw the change in me. And I saw where I was and where I could have been. You don't, you don't have to choose the negative life. You don't have to choose smoking. You don't have to party. You don't have to drink to feel good, to feel happy, to think that you're gonna overcome your depression, your anxiety, whatever you go through. That's not the way. Walking through the doors of Universal Church gave me a way to build my faith. You know, use what God gave us to use, you know? There is a God out there. There's a guy, and he's loving, he's caring, and he's here to change your life, help you be the person that you are designed in to be. to you, my Lord, near to you, my Lord, near to you, in your presence, near to you, my to you, my Lord, near to you, in your presence. I want to be a face in your hands, to exalt you and pray.
my life was completely destroyed before. My mother used to have a headache dealing with me because I would do bad in school. I would always get in trouble. The teachers, the principal would always call my mother and I was just doing really bad. My life was this way because I never truly had happiness and my dad wasn't really around much. So it was just my mother, she would just work um, to try to provide, but as far as spending quality time, we didn't have much of that. I was a very angry person and I used to take it out on anybody I saw. I used to fight random people in the street. I just wanted to feel numb, so I used to smoke a lot as well. I would smoke to numb the pain, I would smoke to just get away from these feelings that I had of being alone. I would be with people from my neighborhood um, and I lived in the heart of the ghetto. So it was the people who were there who sold drugs. I sold drugs as well, um, the violent, the gang members with the guns, everything. This is the type of life that I, I came to have. My mother didn't raise me this way, but that's what I got involved with. I had to smoke every day. I couldn't go a day without smoking. Even before school, I would go to school high. I had a boyfriend and um, I found out he had given me a sexually transmitted disease. And that's when I hit rock bottom. That's when I felt like everything was just going out of control. So I had went to a clinic and I went there to get um, the, a cure for the, for the STD, and I, I was just there in the, in the clinic room wondering what my life had become. I had an older brother who came to the church, and he would drag me to come along with him. I looked back, and I couldn't tell who I had became. So this is when I realized that I needed to change. I didn't know how, but I, I wanted to change. I wanted to do better. I wanted to get back on the right track. When I stopped suffering, it felt like nothing I ever felt before. I felt like the burden was gone completely. And I felt way better. After time, um, I stopped smoking. I no longer had the craving to smoke. I no longer had the desire that was gone. Talking to different guys, this was the next thing that changed because I felt like now there was love. Now I knew God and now I knew the love of God. Now I'm a completely different person. The wrong things, the problems that I was going through, they're gone with the addictions, with the um, being violent. I no longer hang out with these wrong friends. And if I had to tell anybody advice, if I, anybody who's going through my situation or something similar, what I would tell them is look to God. Despite what you heard about churches, despite what you heard about God, if anybody told you God's not real, I'm telling you God is real. And look to him. Look to him because he can help you. He could change you. He could get you out of any problem out of anything you're going through. Everyone who does not submit to God's word brings to themselves destruction to their life. Even though they have faith, goals, and dreams, if there is no obedience to God's word, they will certainly be rejected by God. God sees the heart and recognizes those who fear him and keep their word. And these are the ones who want eternal life, are humbling themselves, repents from their wicked ways, and seek the throne of grace and mercy of God. The Universal Church, empowering lives with the Word of God.
the times that I was lost And you found me, oh Lord For all the tears that I've cried And you wiped them away When I had no strength I was addicted to gambling. I started the gambling since they introduced the lottery in this country. 1999, I started. And it became worse when my children came from Africa and my husband went to university. So 
a difficult financially. I was, it was difficult for me. I have money, I have benefits, I work hard, but all goes to my gambling addiction. I spend a lot of money, my bills. I was over 40,000 pounds debt before I went to the church through gambling. So when I got a leaflet through um, the ch a church, so, and what's always the root on the leaflet referred to me, so I went, I gave it a go. And when I went, I had the, the testimonies of other people, the way their life changed. This, even though I was in a, a different religion, but I believe what they were saying, so I stay. When the campaign of Israel was, was announced, I said, oh, maybe this is my chance for me to stop because I want to get baptized. So after December, January, February, March, March 20th, the last day, I gambled. So April, I didn't gamble. Then when they announced the, the, the baptism for me, I took part. Through the faith and prayers and sacrifice, I'm free from everything. So for the past three and a half years, I'm gambling free. And today, through faith, sacrifice, and listening to the, the, the word of men of God, my life is different. I'm a different person. No more gambling, no more debt. I don't even borrow money from anybody. Nothing, my son is free. I'm a free woman and I'm happy. Tomorrow morning if you wake up and the sun does not appear, I, I will be here. If in the dark we lose sight of love, hold my hand. Your seasons are made for change, our lifetimes are made for I will be here to walk.
seasons are made for change. Our lifetimes are made.